Good morning, North Elliot. Who is excited to be here? Is anybody else ready to worship the Lord? today. Today is a special day. It's Generations Day. And so today all ages and all generations are coming together to worship, to give, and to pray. And what an exciting time that is, right? I love seeing all generations come together. And so I'm glad you chose today to be in the house of God. And Katie's going to open with a verse. I was glad when they 
said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Psalms 122, 1. And if you'll bow your head, Selah's going to lead us in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing us, and let us have a good day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I need CJ, Des, and Abigail. Also, today is Grandparents' Day, so happy Grandparents' Day. We are glad that you are here, and we want to honor you today. And CJ, you can step up to the mic. Um, a, grand, a grandparent is a little bit parent, a little bit teacher, and a little bit best friend. says thank you grandpas and grandmas for being an incredible source of love guidance and inspiration we are grateful for you and we love you happy, happy grandparents day Then our Any Kids Junior, they have been working on a song and a memory verse for you, and they are led by Chloe. She's been working with them while Scotty's been on maternity leave, and she's doing a wonderful job. So if you'll pay attention.
This morning, would you put your hands together for him? So along with this this morning, we have young people doing things all over the place, like Pastor Twilight already mentioned. So we're going to actually have some young people come up and do announcements. If, Ava, you want to come join me. But I want us this morning, th these students are stepping far outside of their comfort zone this morning. Some of them have never spoken in front of anyone. Some of them... They, they have, and we're, we're just so proud of them and everything that they do this morning. Amen? So this morning, as they do this, I want us to encourage them. I want us to clap for them. I want us to worship with them. But I just wanted to get up here before Ava started and say how proud we are of them. But let's do this this morning with them. Amen? All right, so Ava, lead us off. Good morning, everyone, and I just want to thank you for coming to Generation Sunday. I want to remind you that every Sunday we have Propelled Sunday School, and following it every Wednesday we have Worship and Youth. We would love for you to join us for the fifth pastoral anniversary in Pastor Appreciation on September 29th at 1030, and there will be a meal slash celebration following the service. I'm going to hand it off to Carson for the offering. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? Can we give a round of applause for the any kids right here? Didn't they do an awesome job? And can we also give a round of applause for the worship team? Haven't they been doing amazing? They have been doing such an incredible job these past few weeks. Like, I think it's just like a whole different team up there from even the beginning of the year. But as the ushers go around, would you please bow your heads with me as I pray? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you bless the rest of the service, God. Lord, I pray that we prepare our offering, Lord, and let it be not just to give our money, not just to show that we give it, but let it be from the heart, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you continue to bless our day, continue to move in our lives, God, continue to use us in such an incredible way, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you continue, continue to use us, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you guys would go ahead and stand up with us, we're going to go ahead and continue into worship.
us to come in to your house, God, and to worship you and to lift up your name and honor you and give you glory. God, you are so worthy of it all. You are holy, God. You are faithful. You are constant, Lord. There has never been a time, God, where you have failed us. There has never been a time, God, where you have left us, and there never will be. We thank you, God, for your love and your kindness and your goodness, God. Lord, as we continue into worship, God, let this be pleasing to you. Let everything that we do today, God, exalt you and glorify you and give you honor, Lord. You are holy, God. You are so holy and so worthy, God, and we ask you to come into this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here to do whatever you want. Just like we sing, come in and break our walls down. Let heaven come into this place. Lord, fill this place. We want to see you, God. We want to lift up your name, Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God. We thank you and we praise you, God, in your mighty and holy name.
You know what I love about this song this morning is this, that this is literally the sound and the song of heaven. This isn't just a song that that someone put together or, or thought up. This comes directly from Scripture. I believe Isaiah 6 is where it shares, and he says, I saw the Lord seated on his throne. And it talks about the angel circling around and they cry, holy, holy, holy. But then that's not the only place we see it. And I shared this a couple weeks back. I wish I had the exact scripture. But again, we see in Revelation that the exact same thing is taking place. And again, we see angels circling around and it talks about the creatures. And again, we hear the cry and the worship from heaven is holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. I want to tell you that cry never stops. Those scriptures are hundreds of years apart, but yet heaven will forever cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I want them to do something this morning. If you ever wanted to say, I sang along with heaven, this is the song to do it with. Because this is the actual thing they are saying right there in the throne room. So as these young people cry out, as they sing with heaven this morning, will you sing with them? Will you go back into that one more time? This morning. thank you this morning. We thank you for this opportunity, this chance to come into your house, to worship you, to sing with heaven. I believe this morning, crying out the exact words, I believe they are singing still, even all of these years later, around your throne. Nobody else is no man's throne, your throne this morning. God, I thank you for this. I wanted to do something this morning. It's been just kind of stirring on my heart. I want to brag on God for a few minutes. When I look at each and every one of these young people up here worshiping, playing instruments, I see testimony after testimony of how good God is. You know, we this this wasn't here. I've bragged on this before, but when we got here, it was Reuben and Cammie, and they sang, and they, they hit a track, and he would play piano, and they would just go, and that was wonderful. But can I tell you something on Wednesday nights now, when we get over there and we start worshiping, and we have so many that we have to tell them, sorry, you've got to take a break this week. We don't have enough mics. That's a testimony in itself. But I believe this morning as I look down this row, and I won't, I won't share everything, but I look and I even start with this young lady right here, and I see the call of God on her life, what he's doing in your life, and that you have a call to ministry on your life. And I believe that. I speak over that this morning. But I want to say it's amazing because I even remember just almost three years ago us showing up. And this, this girl, if you don't know, she, she acts quiet. When you get her around her family, she's not as quiet. She's hilarious. But she's quiet in front of others. But the amazing thing is, when it comes to worship, she wants to sing and give honor and glory. And whether that means standing in front of just a couple or standing one day maybe in front of thousands, I believe God is going to use that in your life. And as I go down this row, I think of all of the others. 
I even think of JC this morning. She's another quiet one. We've got a lot of quiet ones. I've heard that it, your youth group takes after the youth pastor, and if you can't tell, I can't stop talking. But she's, she's a wonderful young lady. And I tell you what, I could make the funnest game on earth, and this girl would look at me and go, I don't know how fun that actually is. But with that being said, I look at her on Wednesday nights when the Holy Spirit is moving, when you would think that a quiet young lady that maybe doesn't want to talk would be standing off somewhere in a corner. But you know, when I look, I see JC right there in the heart of it all, praying for others, pressing in to what God is doing, what he's starting. I go down these, this row, I see Drew. And you know, when he first showed up, I thought I was going to be this kid's only friend for forever because he would not talk to anyone else. But I tell you what, God has, God has blessed you. He's given you friends more than you even know what to do with, which is so awesome to me. But I also think of when he first started playing the drum, the only thing we could get him to hit was that kick. And it wasn't very loud. But I look up here this morning, and I don't think that it's all talent. I don't think that it's all Drew. I believe God has anointed him to do what he is doing this morning. And while I'm bragging on the musicians, I guess Skyler right back here, it's kind of funny because Pastor Ruben, as many of you know, Wednesday nights, he came back across the street quite some time back now. And when that happened, we were going, what are we going to do without our piano? Well, how, do you, how do you go without that? And Skyler had just started learning some chords. He had the basics. And I tell you what, me and Cammy, we threw him into the fire and we said, hey, buddy, we're going, and I believe God has touched him and anointed him, and I don't want to leave anybody out, but I don't have time for all of you, but I see testimony after testimony, but I want to tell you this morning that this is exactly what you need to be doing. I know some of you have just joined the worship team over the last couple months. Don't stop now. Keep pursuing, keep growing, keep worshiping him and leading others into that this morning. Would you put your hands together for them this morning? Amen, amen. You guys can go ahead and go on down to your seats today. Amen. I'll let you all be seated. I'll have you stand, I'm sure, more than I should, but that's all right. You just got to bear with me this morning. I'm so proud of this, this group. I love seeing them on Sunday mornings, every single one. I know not all of them are singers, and if it was only for singing, I would not be up here this morning because nobody needs to hear that. Um, but they all do a wonderful job. God, God has done an amazing thing in our youth ministry, um, and I believe that he's just getting started. And um, I want to tell you that, uh, you know, I believe we have a hidden treasure sometimes across the street that I wish that we got to show off way more than we do, but I'm thankful today that our pastor also takes that into consideration and he allowed us to do this this morning. Would you put your hands together for him this morning? Thank you, Pastor, for, for the opportunity to speak as well today. And um, this none of this would be possible without, without the leadership that we have, and I believe that this morning. Um, but today, I know we've, we've taken a lot of time. I don't wanna go forever this morning, and some of you are going, please, um, don't take forever. But um, I do want to bring you the word of God this morning, and I'll actually be reading out of two different scriptures, um, and I just let you sit, but if you'd stand for the reading of God's word, I'll be in 1 Kings 18, 38 through 39, in Acts 2, 2 through 8, and the youth are probably about tired of these scriptures, but I wanted to give you a glimpse of what we are doing across the street and continue this Generation Sunday, um, I believe, the way the Lord wanted to do it this morning. So 1 Kings 18, 38 through 39 says this, Then the Lord's fire fell and consumed the burnt offering.
Christians? How is it that each of us can hear them in our own native tongue? I'm going to pray this morning, but if you would do me a favor, my brain has been everywhere this morning. Would you reach your hand this way and pray for me this morning as well? Lord, we ask that you move this morning, that you speak your word. Let me get out of the way and let you have this platform and allow you to do what you want these next few minutes. God, I ask that you anoint your word, touch it this morning, and let someone leave changed forever today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated this morning. So the message I am speaking today is simply entitled Fire. Now, I believe this is God, what God wanted to speak to us today, but I also wanted to continue our theme, like I said, across the street. Um, if you didn't know this, me and Cami, before we, we came here, the, the youth group that we had been a part of for a long time had always did what they called words of the year, a word of the year. So that is where we believe, we pray, we seek God's face for where he wants to lead the youth group for that particular school year. And we felt like we um, were led to continue kind of that, that idea um, here for this youth group. And, um, you know, it, it was very amazing because the first school year we started this up, the Lord, we believe, had laid on our heart the word fruit. And actually the scripture that we, we used with that word comes from Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and I believe most of you would know it. But it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we began to pray that over our youth group. We did series about fruit in our youth group. We did everything we could to push this idea of fruit and us bearing fruit over there. And I'll tell you this, and some of the leaders in the room, some of the youth leaders that um, are in the room, they could attest to this and say that we actually saw this take place. Um, it, was, it was amazing. It, the only explanation could be God, that, you know, we started to see fruit starting to pour out of some of these students and from the youth group. And I believe what you saw today is also that fruit continuing to pour out of this group and I believe that, and it was, it was incredible what we saw, the change in just a simple school year. And then as we continued, we, um, we had another word for the year, and many of you would know this one because we did a small series over here with it last year as well, but that word was grow. And uh, we spoke on growth in our walk, growth in our faith, growth in our group. And again, it was amazing because all last year we began to see God growing in the lives of our students and the walk with, that they have with the Lord. We began to see growth in our group all over the place, and it was amazing and powerful, and I believe God's hand was on it again. And then as we began to pray for this year and this school year, what, what would our word be? You know, it would have been really easy to try to find something that just kind of stayed in that category, fruit and grow and, and those things. But we really wanted to seek what God had to speak over this group. And uh, we actually went to, to church camp. And um, after church camp, we got back. I believe God started to speak this word of fire to me. And I believe your students are probably so sick of me preaching about it, but I don't, it doesn't bother me at all. But I believe that God was speaking this word a fire over the group and over our youth ministry. And, you know, today even I wonder if it's not just for the group, but maybe for the families of our students, for the church as a whole of our students. And the reason I say that this morning and the reason I believe God had, has taken us to this word, this idea for this year, is because as much as I believe we have an amazing youth ministry, as much as, you know, we still need to improve, there's many things, and that's not bragging on me, I'm bragging on these kids. I hope you know that when I say that. It's not me, it's them. But when I say that, I believe that we have an amazing group that loves the Lord, that they are growing in their walk, they're bearing fruit. But as I began to look at the group and pray about it, I started to realize that if we as a youth group want to be all that we can be, if we as a youth ministry want to reach into our schools for our families to be saved, for all of these things to take place, I believe we cannot do that without the fire and power 
of the Holy Spirit being present in our group. And you know, it's been amazing because we've only been on this series now for just a few weeks. Pastor kicked us off back across the street when the school year started. And since that moment, it has been amazing because we have seen many students come to the Lord and be, be saved. And not only that, but even just a couple weeks ago, and I believe I already shared this over here, but we didn't even get to the message because we were praying for students. The Holy Spirit was moving. And they, they, they prayed for each other, and it just continued to the point that we were actually, we were starting to get to the point, we were wondering if parents were going to start popping in saying, where is my kid at? What are you doing? But it's because the power of God was present, and it hasn't stopped. Even this past week, we saw more come into the kingdom, and I could not be more thankful. And today, I want to just give you a little glimpse into that as I just have a few minutes that I've given myself, but that's all right. So my first point this morning is this, fire requires preparation. So I brought you two scriptures, two passages to start today, and the first actually comes from the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel, where the fire of God falls and consumes the sacrifice, and the second is from the upper room where the Holy Spirit the fire of the Holy Spirit falls on the day of Pentecost. Now, I love the Bible. I'm sorry, I got to pull up that screen so you guys can see it. Thank you. Now, as I look at the Bible, I love that it connects in so many ways. From front to back, we see connection all over the place. And I love it because in these two stories, one from the Old Testament, one from the New, very different time periods apart. But yet we look at them and they actually connect in more ways than we could imagine. And, you know, I began to think about this and I truly believe, you know, it's because times and seasons change, but our God never changes. The thing I want us to realize in these two stories is, you know, yes, it's talking about fire falling from heaven, but they're very different fires. And the story with Elijah, obviously, he wants real, literal fire to fall and consume an offering that he is presenting to God. And if you don't know that story, Elijah is actually pretty much facing off with the prophets of Baal, hundreds of prophets. He is facing off and he is saying, Whichever God answers by fire, that is the true God. But before this just happens, Elijah does a few things in order for it to take place. He gathers, if you've read the story, stones and wood, and then he has to prepare it and prep it. And then he even starts gathering water and pouring it all over the sacrifice, which to many sounded crazy. And if it was you, you'd probably look at him crazy as well. You want this to catch on fire and you're soaking it. But when he's doing that, he actually says a prayer. And in that prayer, I want us to look at something and hear something. And it's 1 Kings 18.36, and it says this. At the time for offering the evening sacrifice, the prophet Elijah approached the altar and said, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be made known that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that at your word, I want to read that again. At your word, I have done all of these things. At your word, I have done all of these things. Now, if we skip ahead to the story we looked at next, when we look at the day of Pentecost and look at what was taking place, we have to remember that they are doing what they are doing on purpose and for a reason. They didn't just show up to this room and this just took place and happened. They showed up because they were told to be there. Acts chapter 1, we actually hear, and you don't have this scripture, so don't worry. In Acts chapter 1, we see where Jesus tells them, do not leave Jerusalem, but stay and wait for what I have promised you. They again in this story were doing exactly what they were told by God to do. I believe today in our lives, if we want to see the fire of the Lord come into our life, into our family, into our church, into our ministries, I believe that we, again, need to be doing what God has asked us to do. Now, you may look at me this morning and say, how in the world do I know what God is asking me to do? How do, how do I know what our church is supposed to look like? How do I know what it's supposed to sound like? And I would tell you this morning, and it may seem like a simple answer for me to give you, 
but I believe sometimes it actually is this simple, and I believe that if we really want the fire of God to be in this place, we need to start looking like this word tells us to look. Our families need to start looking like this word tells us to. Our lives need to start looking like it tells us to. It kind of, you know, I, I, I don't say these things to, to bash anyone. But I believe sometimes we're asking God to do a whole lot and we're not willing to do very little. The second thing I want to bring this morning, and it kind of goes along with this, is this, only what is prepared will burn. So what I mean by this is in both of these stories this morning, you actually look at an offering being prepared, a sacrifice being prepared. Now in the first story, it's pretty obvious, right? Elijah's preparing this bull that he was given, and he he is setting up the altar for it to be burned. But oftentimes we forget that in the upper room, these people, they're not preparing something or an animal. They're preparing themselves to burn, to burn for the Lord, to burn with the Holy Spirit. And I don't even know if they realized what they were preparing, but they were. Now, when we look at this story, Jesus tells them to go and pray and wait. And what we forget is that this didn't happen in five minutes. It didn't happen in 10 minutes. It didn't happen in an hour. It didn't even happen in a day. It's believed that it took place 10 days after they were told to go and wait. 10 days of waiting, 10 days of gathering, 10 days of praying. And you may say, well, that's just, you know, it's by chance or, you know, if it could have happened in a minute, it's just, it's just, you know, it's just by chance. But I don't believe God does anything by accident or by chance. I believe that he knew what he was doing, and I believe, you know, just like Elijah was preparing for the fire that was to come, I believe these individuals were preparing for the fire that was about to come down on them. I believe in this room, I believe that there was was people that needed to get some things right. I believe that they were praying and they needed to sort some things out in themselves. I believe that maybe, and this may sound harsh, I believe that maybe there were some people that needed to leave the room for the Holy Spirit to fall. I believe for them to all be in one accord and of one mind, not everybody could be there. I believe that they were preparing themselves and the body for the fire that was about to fall and consume them. I don't want to go long on this today. But I believe, just like I mentioned a moment ago, that if we want the fire to fall and consume us today, that we need to get some things right. I need to prepare my heart. You know, some of us, it's we see someone that is full of the Holy Spirit. We see the Spirit evident in their life. And we think, wow, how, how wonderful, how powerful. I wish I had that. I wish I had what, what the Lord has given them. But oftentimes we forget what they're doing when nobody else is around. Sometimes we don't realize the prayer life that they have in the middle of the night when the Lord wakes them up and they're willing to get on their knees. When they're willing to get in this word, sometimes hours on end, because they feel the Lord led them to do so. I believe some of us in the room today, we say that we want a church that is full of power, full of fire. But some of us, we won't even bring God the little things in our life to pray over. And I, again, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to, sometimes I feel like maybe you think I, I'm just bashing on people and, you know, if I had your, job, pastor, it would be so much easier to to do those things. I'm not, I I don't want to sound that way today. I hope you understand that. I just want to be really real with you because I know before I got here when I was working 50 hours a week and then I was supposed to work 20 hours at the church as well, sometimes it was really easy to neglect the time that I needed to spend alone. I want you to know I know where you're coming from today. And at that time, I didn't have children Some of you have one, two, three children that you're dealing with, not dealing with, that you love. 
that you love, but it, it's consuming of your time. It's consuming of what's going on in your life. But I also want to tell you this morning, if you want the fire of the Holy Spirit to be seen in their lives, guess what? It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth getting alone. It's worth doing these things that need to be taken out. It's worth giving up some things that maybe we really enjoy that we don't want to give up, but we know on the inside something is there saying, I've got to stop this. I know it's not right. I know God has talked to me about this, but yet I'm holding on to it. Can I tell you, if you want the fire of the Holy Spirit in your life, in your family, in this church, that thing is actually worth so little. You know, I was actually talking to the students this morning for just a moment before we got ready. We didn't have a normal Sunday school because all that they were doing, I wanted them to be prepared. And I felt the Lord bring up, you know, this idea of a tithe of time to me while we were, we were preparing. And I know that can be a lot of time. But I want to tell you, every minute's worth it. I've never, I've never regretted a moment I've given to God. And I want to tell you one day when you're in eternity, it'll be worth it as well. When you see your kids walk into those gates, it'll be worth it. You know, what I love, though, about the story as well is this that the fire did fall in both situations. We see, you know, however, that this fire that fell for Elijah wasn't just for Elijah. When the fire fell in that scripture that I started with today, it says that the people watching fell on their hands and their faces and their knees and they begin to cry, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And then again, we look and we see on the day of Pentecost, when the fire began to fall from the upper room and it says that it was distributed and then they were consumed and they began to speak in other tongues, we get to hear the story of the people that were down below on the street and all of a sudden they start hearing these languages that they recognize that were their own language, but they start saying, are you hearing this? Do you hear what's happening up there? These, these guys are all Galileans. They, they don't know how to speak this. This is bizarre. This, is, this isn't normal. What is taking place? And you know, if you read the whole story, the fire fell, yes, and it was powerful for those 120. But if you look at the end of the day, thousands were saved because the fire fell. It wasn't just for those in the upper room. It was for all of them. I want you to hear me for a moment. I believe this power isn't just for then, for back then, for those people, but I believe that it's for today. I believe that it's for this church. I believe that it's for this youth group. I believe that it's for our kids' ministry in our nursery. I believe that it is for right now. But here's what I also know, that that fire that falls isn't just for me and you, John. That fire is just not for us. It's not just for, for our youth. It's not just for this church. But I believe it's for everybody that's around us. I want to tell you this morning, there are a lot of people in this community, in our schools, in our workplaces that are dying and going to hell. And they are. But I believe today if we would get a hold of this power, this fire that could fall, I believe that all of a sudden we could start to hear people as we go out and they could start to say, do you hear what's happening over there at that church? Have you heard that the power of God supposedly is being seen? that miracles are happening, that revival is breaking out, that they're actually seeing God do something, do you believe that it's real? Do you believe that they could actually be telling the truth? Maybe we should go check it out. Maybe we should go see 
what this is about. Maybe there's something to this. And you know, whether that's us, you know, having, you know, just a miracle take place or a revival like I mentioned, or whether it's us being the hands and the feet of Christ, whatever that looks like, I believe those people, if we allow God to have his way, I believe if they hear about it, they see it, we could turn around and I believe we could see a community, our schools falling on their hands and their knees and saying, Jesus, he is God. Jesus, he is God. I believe that's possible. I believe that he already is starting to move. I believe that he wants to move more than we've even allowed yet. I believe that he can and he will. But I also want to tell you this, and this is kind of my last point this morning. Skylar, if you'd want to come. The enemy is scared of fire. So in this last point, I want to tell you this. The enemy hates when fire starts. He hates it. And how do I know this? Because in both of these stories, he tries to put it out. In the first story with Elijah, if you, if you don't know that there is this evil queen named Jezebel, and she winds up hearing about what happened, what took place, and she winds up getting word back to Elijah that she is going to kill him. And unfortunately for him, he runs and is terrified and scared, and he trusts no one in this moment. But we also read that the Lord helps him and helps him get back up and brings him back from this place. But the second story is what I want to look at for a moment today, and it's this. You know, when this is happening, when they start hearing the, the men and women start start speaking in other tongues, all of a sudden the, the word starts to spread that, you know, this isn't real. This isn't actually happening. They're drunk. Don't believe them. They're drunk. This, this you're, you're hearing things. It's, it's whatever. This can't actually be happening. But the amazing thing is, Peter, if you know the story, stands up and he says, these men are not drunk as you suppose. And he starts preaching the gospel, sharing the gospel message with these individuals. And what I love is that before the lie can even work its way far, he steps it right out. Sometimes I believe that we think we have to rely on on everybody else. We have to rely on somebody else to step in and, and put out the lie of the enemy. But I want to tell you this morning, the Lord has given you authority to put out the lie of the enemy over your life, over your family. I believe that it comes from the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. But I believe when you start hearing that lie, I believe God has given you power to say, enough's enough. It stops here. It stops with me. It's not going any further. Today I want to tell you that I believe that the fire is going to consume us. I believe it started. I believe a spark has started across the street and I believe something is changing in this place. We've sensed it on Sunday mornings. But I also know as that begins to start, the enemy is going to try to come along and put it out. Today, I want to encourage you, don't let him put it out in your life. Don't let him hold you back from what he has for you. Chase after what God has. Chase after this fire. Chase after it for you, for your family, for your loved ones, for those that you're going to encounter. Don't let the enemy put it out. This morning, if you would, all over the room, if you would stand with me. Would you do me a favor? Would you just close your eyes and bow your heads today? I want you to do something with me this morning. I believe God wants to do something today, but I want us to pray. I want us to seek after God for just a moment, and then I want to see where the Lord leads us. So if you would, I want to hear you pray. I want you to pray with me. I want God to lead us for a moment. So would you... In concert prayer, pray with me for God to lead us in the next few moments. God, we come to you this morning, Lord.
God, a hungry people, a thirsty people for what you have, God, for the fire of the Holy Spirit to come on this house, God. Father, for it to be evident in our lives, I want to hear you pray this morning. I know you can pray. Pray with me. God, we want to see you move. We want to see you touch lives, God. Father, heal people. Save the lost and the sinner, Lord. We want you to direct our steps. Guide us where we should go next today, God. And I believe that you want to do it in this house, God. But I believe that we need to want it. We have to be prepared for it, God. And I would pray that this morning, even in this moment, we would begin to prepare our heart and say, God, I want you to come. Whatever you've got to remove. I want you to remove it. Whatever you've got to do, I want you to do it. God, I want more of you. I want your power. I want your fire. I want my kids to see it. I don't want to be embarrassed by it. God, I want it this morning. We want it today, God. Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. This morning, I'm going to give a very open altar call today. I'm going to ask you to come for many things this morning. The one I'll ask you first is if you need to accept Christ as your Savior this morning, I'd ask you to come when I tell you. The next thing is this. If you feel like the enemy has put out the fire that was in your life, he's tried to stomp it out and say, no, that's not going to be there, and you've let it happen this morning, I would encourage you when I say to come, for you to come into this altar and say, enemy, no, you're not going to take that from me. It was given by God and man, or the devil cannot take it away. The next thing I want to tell you this morning, if you've never been filled this morning, I'm going to ask you to come. I'm going to ask you to come expecting this morning him to move over you, him to do something in your life this morning. And the next thing is this, if you have any reason to come this morning, you need a miracle, you have a lost loved one, you have something you are asking God for today, I'll ask you to come. I want to tell you this morning as I give these out, If you're willing this morning, I don't believe any of us have any reason to stay in our seat. I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to tell you you have to. But I want to tell you this today. I believe God wants to move in these altars. I've been praying. He had me up late last night. I believe for you. So today I'm going to ask you as I pray, I want you to come. Lord, I ask as these individuals come down here today and as leaders prepare to pray over them, to pray over any and all things that they have today, God, I'm going to ask that you move, that you touch, that you anoint those praying and speaking over lives today, God. But I ask that you have your way. God, whatever you want to speak, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to touch this morning, I ask that you do it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can come this morning if you'd like. to the room everything changes the world starts to tremble at the lights that you bring when you walk into the room every heart starts burning nothing lies more just to sit here at your feet and worship you some of you that are intercessors, our leaders, our council, to come and pray for the young people over here. Let them know that we're with them, or young couples, or anybody that might come. Just our pastoral staff, just come on out. Let's lay hands on one another. Let's believe God. Amen. We just want this generation to know fire, fire, fire. Hallelujah. Go ahead and scout you can sing again. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. When you walk into the room, sickness starts to vanish. Every hopeless situation ceases to exist. When you walk into the room, day begins to rise. Cause there is resurrection life.
just praying in this building just everybody praying in this building Skylar we want you to be able to go and be part of that prayer you go down there with the youth let us lay hands on you for your future the anointing that's on your life hallelujah everybody just keep praying we're going to switch out on the piano just keep praying come on I want to hear you I'm going to switch out Father, we praise you. God, we praise you. God, we praise you. God, we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we need you. The generations, we need you, not just the youth, not just the the kids, not just the 2030s, not just the 40s, 50s, not just the 60s, 70s, the 80s, the 90s. We need you, Lord. We need you. Psalm 145.5 says, One generation shall praise your works to the next. Hallelujah. Fill this room. Fill us. Fill this place with the fire of God. Fill us with the fire of God. Hallelujah. 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 I say to even some of the the teens in the youth group. Maybe you need to go lay hands on your parents and pray for them. They've prayed for you. Let it go back generationally, not just us praying for for the younger, but the younger praying for the older.
praise. Let the earth erupt in praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. Oh, spirit, break out. Oh, spirit, break out. Lift your voice. Break our walls. See you. 